Welcome to my channel. If you like my videos, then kindly subscribe, like, and watch. Thank you. Hello. Problem one dash thirty three. So the statement of problem is the bar has cross sectional area A and is subjected to axial load P. So this is a bar having area A and that is acted upon by axial loading P. Determine the average normal and average shear stress acting over the shaded section. So you have to find the uh, average loading, normal loading and shear loading over this shaded section of the bar, which is oriented at theta from horizontal so this theta varies this here theta will be zero and if you increase the theta so theta will vary and theta is greater than or equal to zero and less or equal to 90 degree also it is given that plot the variation of these stresses as a function of theta so let's start uh, with the solution for that solution i will have to draw the free body diagram and for free body diagram you can see that if i draw it like this so this is the vertical portion here this is same and this is the inclined portion and this inclined portion is making angle theta t and this is acted upon by normal load p so when you find you when you want to find the internal loading at this inclined surface so there will be a normal force which, is, which will be perpendicular to this surface and this normal force will be N and there will be a shear force will be, which will be along this surface and this is V. So in order to find this N and V we have to um, we have to uh, convert this force in along this uh, new coordinate system which is in this shear force and vertical force direction so you can see this is a horizontal force and this is inclined surface which is making an angle of theta with degree uh, with this uh, horizontal surface so if i make a parallel line of parallel to this force so this 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 is a parallel line clear so this force will also make this parallel line will also make theta with here clear so now you can convert this uh, p force into two component one along this direction clear and other one along this direction clear and we will apply the equilibrium condition so first equilibrium condition that sum of all forces let let this is along uh, x direction x dash direction clear and this is y dash direction Initially, this was x direction, and this is y direction. So we have uh, we have converted this force into two components: one along x dash direction, another one is along y dash direction. So, so sum of force along x dash direction is equal to zero, and force in this direction is taken as positive. So you can see one shear force which is acting here is V, which is in this direction that will be positive. The second force which is along this direction and that is component of P and this force will be equal to P cos of theta because when you take cos of theta so cos of theta equal to this divided by uh, P clear so this force will be equal to P cos of theta so V and this force is upward so it will be V minus P cos of theta their sum must be equal to zero so from here we can get v is equal to p cos of theta similarly for finding this normal force we will apply the condition sum of all force along y dash is equal to zero and force in this direction in direction of n is taken as positive so you can see one force is n which is positive the second force is this component of p which is in opposite direction of n and this force will be equal to p sin of theta so n minus p sin of theta that is equal to zero so from here we will get n is equal to p into sin of theta now we have both internal uh, loading shear force is equal to p cos of theta and normal force which is p sin of theta 
we will find the average normal stress and shear stress so we will move toward that so average normal average normal stress and shear stress we will find them clear now you can see if i draw a three dimensional figure of this so uh, this is the initial rod here and this is the oblique plane so this is the original area a and this shaded portion is a dash clear where the shear force and normal stress uh, normal force is acting so this area is a dash and this is angle theta so basically this is this area is a so if i take sin of theta clear so sin of theta will be equal to a divided by a dash a is this area which is perpendicular just like this and a dash is this hypotenuse area so from here we can get a dash is equal to a over sin of theta now you know that uh, normal stress average normal stress is equal to normal force which is here n clear divided by the area uh, shaded area because this normal force is acting perpendicular to this so area a dash so n is equal to p sin of theta where a dash is equal to a over sin of theta so from here we can get uh, average stress sigma dash is equal to p by a into sin square theta clear i will write it this average stress is equal to p by a sin square theta now we know that the shear stress that was acting on this was the normal stress and this is the shear stress v so shear stress every shear stress is equal to shear force divided by shear area so shear force is equal to p into cos of theta p into cos of theta and sharing area is equal to a over sin theta so when you simplify it the average shear stress comes out to be p into cos theta into sin theta divided by a clear again if we multiply it and divide it by 2 so we will get p into 2 cos theta into sin theta divided by 2a and we know that uh, sin of 2 theta from trigonometric ratio we know that sin of 2, 2 theta is equal to 2 sin theta into cos theta clear so 2 cos theta into sin theta will be replaced by p into sin of 2 theta divided by 2a clear so this is the average shear stress i will write it average shear stress is equal to p by 2a into sin of 2 theta so we have both the value of average shear stress and average normal stress in question it was also given to find out to plot the variation of these stresses as a function of theta so we will first plot for this plot for average normal stress so what we will do is that we will uh, have this plotting so on horizontal axis this is point 0 on horizontal axis you can take uh, the value of angle that this is 30 degree 
this is 45 degree this is 60 degree and this is 90 degree so when you put theta is equal to 0 so sine of 0 will be 0 so average stress here this is average stress and the here theta will be in degrees so for theta is equal to 0 average stress will be equal to 0 for theta is equal to 30 degree clear so when you put 30 degree and you take the square sine square of 30 degree so you will get stress is equal to p by 4a so let this is p by 4a uh, p by 4a again you have to put the value theta is equal to 30 degree and you will get the sigma average and you can plot it like here so for theta is equal to 45 degree you can put 45 degree over here and you can calculate it will be p by 2a so let this is p by 2a you will have to draw it as per scale there for theta is equal to 60 degree so this average stress will be equal to 3p over 4a 3p over 4a and for theta is equal to 90 degrees so 90 degrees is equal to 1 so sine sine square of 90 degree will be equal to 1 and that will be equal to p by a again you can plot them this is the first point this is the second point this is the third point and this is the fourth point so you can join them by so it will be like this it will be like this so this is the first point this is the second point this is the third point and this one is the fourth point so this is the distribution of uh, sigma average normal stress uh, with varying the theta angle now we will plot for shear stress so plot for every shear stress again you have to uh, draw the axis on vertical axis you will have average shear stress on horizontal axis you will be having theta in degrees clear so you can this is zero this is let's say 45 degree and this is 90 degree for example this point is 90 degree so for theta is equal to 0 sine of 0 is equal to 0 so this will be 0 for theta is equal to 45 degree clear uh, so sine of uh, 2 into 45 so sine of 90 degree and that will be equal to 1 so shear every shear stress is equal to p by 2a so let this is p over 2a so this will be at a point of 45 degree and again at theta is equal to 90 so 2 into 90 is 180 so it will be again 0 so we when you join them so it will be like this so distribution of average shear stress will be like this one i hope you have enjoyed this problem and learned a lot from this thank you for watching